The first topic we need to know for the test is decision trees. Now, the best way to learn decision trees is to make one. So let's go ahead and make a decision tree. Here we are in jump. Now to make a decision tree, we need to decide on one Y variable we want to analyze and then use all of our X variables. So let's go to analyze modeling partition. Now we can select all the variables and put them into our X field. With this right here, we can now select one Y variable that we want to analyze. Let's say we want to analyze whether or not someone has broken a bone. Now, an important thing we should not forget is that when we do this analysis, we need to make sure that we do not have any indicator variables in here because those generally have problems with decision trees. So now we have one Y variable we want to analyze and we also have a bunch of X variables that are going to try to explain that Y variable. For the next topic, we'll actually be partitioning the tree. You'll notice that the R squared will increase with each partition. We also need to figure out when to stop partitioning the tree, and there are two ways of doing that. We can look to see if the partitions are illogical, if they don't make sense, if when we try to predict broken bone, if we're doing it by how many donuts you eat a week, something that just makes no sense, like what would eating donuts have to do with breaking bones? But maybe it's something like how many extreme sports you play, and that would probably have something to do with breaking bones. So we need to look into those partitions. Then we can also look at our increase in R squared after every split, and we'll take a look at that one in particular on our tree over here. Now we can color the points here to go ahead and show us. We have the people who are blue are the people who have broken a bone, and the people who are red have not broken a bone. It's about a 50-50 split with more students having not broken a bone. And let's go ahead and split the tree, and I will have to move this up so everyone can see what's happening here. So now when we split the tree, we can see that there are even more splits down here, so let's just split it. And this is a nice and symmetric tree, Sometimes we might split it even more, but this has on it three splits. And if you'll notice, there are three splits because this was the first split right here. It split this down twice. And then we split right here. And we split over here next. And you'll notice we have on the left the people who are most likely to have broken a, a bone. If you'll notice, the people who have broken a bone, the yes, are blue. And so going back down here, we see this group right here are the most likely to have broken a bone. And even then, um, with this in mind, this last split might not make much sense. And this tree really didn't do a great job. And we can tell how good of a job it did by looking at our split history. The split history is going to show us the R squared after every split. And if you notice, we can change the graphic a little bit here the R squared really went nowhere and it went nowhere fast. So it started off about 2%, went to about 2.6%, and now we're up to about 3.8%, something close to that. So we really don't do a good job with this tree at explaining why people have broken bones. Uh, it only explains about 3.8% of the variation. And the split history right here can tell us when we should stop. Frankly, this tree might have just been a bad idea from the start because it really doesn't do a good job. The first split on gender uh, was our biggest increase, and then from there on, we had smaller increases of about uh, maybe close to 1% and a little bit around 1% also. So this tree doesn't do a good job. We can look at the splits down here, like why would spending money outside of meal plan determine if someone has broken a bone? Not sure. Why would watching sports on a phone or tablet determine if someone's broken a bone? Maybe those people are more involved with sports. We're uncertain, but the most likely people to have broken a bone looks to be the group over here because they have the most blue, where the least likely to have broken a bone would be this group and this group right here. And if you notice, these 1018 people keep getting split down. One big suggestion I have for when you do a decision tree is if you take the leaf report, which actually lets us view inside of all those, so let's expand this just a little bit here. This is maybe my biggest suggestion for the test, is take your leaf report and write on here, one, two, three, four. 
So this tells you this is leaf one, leaf two, leaf three, leaf four, and these are the terminal leaves. The terminal leaves are the leaves without any splits below them. So when you look right here, you'll see there are 313 people in terminal leaf one, terminal leaf two, terminal leaf three, and terminal leaf four. I actually write those numbers on my test so you can keep track of when you look down here at the output exactly what is going into them. You'll notice 125 plus 188 is equal to 313. 379 could be found by adding up 254 and 125. That will equal 379. Also, it's important to know that this leaf right here, which is not a terminal leaf, is a factor of leaf three and leaf four. This one is a factor of leaf one and leaf two. And right here, this would be a factor of leaf one, two, three, and four. So you can break down this tree in a lot of ways. Lots of good things to know here. And this is pretty much the output we analyze when we do a decision tree. The split history shows us the R squared as it increases with each split. You can just see number of splits right here. If I were to bring back the tree, it would be here and bring it back to the start with just one split there. And then of course, if there's no splits, it's not explaining any of the variation. And the leaf report lets you see inside the terminal leaves. And I can't state enough that writing those numbers on the leaves can be a big help. One, two, three, four, and then go down here. And what do you have? One, two, three, four. And you'll notice this leaf one right here is for males who spend more than 30, 30 or more dollars outside a meal plan a week. And you'll look, males who spend more than 30 or more, 30 or more dollars outside a meal plan a week. Last but not least, we have the R squared interpretation right here. And very important. We need to just, it's the same old interpretation, but with a little spin at the end. And now you need to insert what's going on right there. We need to say 3.8% of the variation in someone breaking a bone is explained by the variables in the tree. And you don't need to say all the variables. Uh, someone who's looking at it can figure that out. Sometimes decision trees are really big and you wouldn't want to list off 50, 60, 70 variables. There's some really big decision trees out there for some interesting data sets. So 3.8% of the variation in whether or not someone breaks a bone is explained by the variables in the tree. And that does it for decision trees. Probably one of the best ways to study decision trees is to go through and make your own decision trees. Make the leaf reports and look at them. Make the split histories and look at the split history. This is one split history. And of course, interpret your R squareds. Understand what decision trees are trying to do. They're trying to explain one Y variable with lots of X variables. And we're letting the computer do the work for us. Also, a decision tree can split on the same X variable multiple times. It could split on height when trying to predict weight because height is a really good predictor of weight. And I've seen a decision tree split on height three or four times. It can use that X variable as many times as it wants. Finally, decision trees are actually gonna take a quantitative variable and split it into levels. And you'll notice that in the decision tree we made earlier. Right here in the decision tree, you'll notice weekly money spent outside of meal plan is a quantitative variable, but now we've turned it into a categorical where there's levels to it. So we have greater than equal to 30 and we have less than 30. So it's kind of categorical now because it's people who do this or do this. Did you spend more than or equal to 30? Yes. No? So it's now a categorical question. And it was a quantitative variable to start. That's it for decision trees. If you have questions, feel free to email me.